ici, on a Upper Belgrave Road. C'est l'entrée un peu du quartier de Clifton. Et Clifton, si vous ne le savez pas, c'est un peu le quartier un peu riche, un peu UP de Bristol. Alors, on avait eu l'idée de faire avec Garo euh, de, de, de faire un petit film sur les bars cachés à Bristol. Je voulais la faire un petit peu à la Antoine de Maximi. Sauf que je n'ai pas l'appareil qu'il faut avec. Mais Garo est un, est un bon coéquipier. Alors, on va vous emmener au Asbar. Sauf que le problème, c'est que le Asbar, on ne le voit pas. Là, vous avez l'entrée d'un restaurant. C'est le Rajput Restaurant. Et on va aller... Euh, bah dans le house bar si vous voulez. Arrivé à Bristol en 2001, Aurelius Brandbars décide cinq ans plus tard de créer le house bar, un bar qu'il voulait à son image, calme et quelque peu introverti, son côté berlinois sans doute. Sa devise « No farm, no jelly » Littéralement, pas de mousse, pas de confiture. JJ, le barman, nous ouvre quand même les portes en costume trois pièces. Le temps pour nous de s'installer pour questionner l'autoproclamé précurseur d'une nouvelle tendance pour les bars dissimulés à Bristol. Au-delà de sa devanture, Aurelius a-t-il seulement voulu créer un bar caché I didn't, really. um... It was when I opened this bar just before this became a trend. Uh, I didn't set the trend. Uh, I was just opening just before this. But for me, it was mainly about uh, a closed door so that we know who's coming in and that the people who are in feel comfortable and looked after. Um, for me, it was not trying to relive old days. Um, Yeah? Is there a trend in Bristol of hidden bars? Yes, there is, yes. But in Bristol, I say it's a little bit based on house bar. Yeah. Um, because we, for me, it's um, I don't want to make a big fuss about me or my, uh, my place. I just do things the way I like and hope, hope that people like it. Um, but I, I don't make a big sign saying I'm here. So. But uh, this worked very well, and this was a new thing. So um, other bars in Bristol had a similar approach. It's also to um, to get certain people and avoid others, really. But for me, I grew up in a, uh, my father's Michelin-style restaurant. Um, I come from this background. I'm a trained waiter, uh, and. Being dressed like this is very normal for a good restaurant uh, and for me also for a good bar. So for me this is standard, this is not old school, well old school maybe but it's not not the past, it's still quality. Is this like a speakeasy? Is this a speakeasy? No. No? No. So what, what kind of bar? Well you see, I, 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 if you have a website and if people write about you, It can't be a speakeasy. A speakeasy is a place nobody knows about. You okay. know, only you know, hush hush, and nobody talks about it. But people know us, so it's not speakeasy. This is this is about the feeling you get inside, which is maybe the connection to speakeasy. It's this um, feeling looked after and comfortable once you're in. Um, But we, we, we don't make a secret over it, but we also don't shout over it. So it's people need to find out themselves. Yeah, and uh, you don't have to queue at the bar, you take a seat at the table, we do table service. This was also not um, usual in the UK when I started this. Nobody in the bar do table service, but we do. So, um, but this is how I think I should be, you know, take a seat, relax and we do the rest. <laughs> 